Hello, I'm Jacopo Colonnelli, a researcher at the University of Torino and a member of the CWL technical team. And my today's presentation will explore the possibility to use CWL as a design language for HPC workflows. So are we there yet or there's still something missing? First of all, it is crucial to understand which are the main partners that compose HPC workflows in order to understand if CWL currently supports all of them or not. Commonly, when a scientist decides to model his scientific application as an explicit workflow using a workflow language, he's looking after features like portability, reproducibility and reusability, which are crucial aspects of any serious scientific experiment. However, workflow brings more features that are important in many cases, for example, clarity and understandability so that a reader can figure out all the steps of a complex scientific experiment. Provenance tracking, both prospective and retrospective, to understand uh, all the details behind an experiment execution. Modularity, which foster extensibility and the maintainability of a scientific application. And even scalability, because since uh, workflow mo models uh, enclose explicit dependencies between uh, loosely coupled steps of, a, of an application, it is commonly quite easy to separate the various components and running them at large scale, automating aspects like uh, data movements, fault tolerance, scheduling, and so on and so forth. However, in the HPC community, the crucial aspect is performance. Applications must run fast at very, very large scales, and the control plane must not introduce any bottleneck in the overall execution. Along this line, as we will see in the rest of this presentation, the majority of uh, partners that we can find in HPC workflow aim at further optimized performance, either removing overheads or for data movements by tightly coupling different steps of an application or allowing some steps to run concurrently in order to remove uh, unnecessary barriers in the overall execution. In 2017, Rafael Ferreira da Silva and his co-authors identified five main patterns for HPC workflows. The basic one, the sequential one, has a step T1 that starts processing its input data, terminates producing output data, and those output data are passed to another step T2, which can then start. Whenever T1 produces uh, an iterable container uh, as an output data, for example a list, the sequential pattern can be optimized by a parallel pattern in which uh, several instances of T2 are spawned in parallel, each one processing a tile of T1's output data. Another optimization is the concurrent execution pattern in which T1 and T2 execute at the same time and T2 consumes the data produced by T1 as soon as they are available. Note that all those patterns are, uh, can be encoded inside a directed acyclic graph. However, not all HPC applications are acyclic. For example, optimization problems, iterative uh, simulations, or training workloads of deep neural networks are all examples of iterative workloads. We need cycles. In, indeed, the next pattern identified by Raphael and uh, its co-authors is the iterative pattern in which uh, T1 starts, completes, uh, triggering the uh, execution of T2, and when T2 terminates, producing uh, its output, then a condition is evaluated by the workflow management system to check if uh, another iteration of T1 with updated data is necessary or if the workflow can proceed with subsequent steps. Another example of uh, a cyclic pattern is the tightly coupled pattern in which steps T1 and T2 are uh, executed at the same time, like in the concurrent case, but they keep exchanging partial results, so they work uh, together. And finally, there is the external steering pattern, which is similar to uh, iterative and concurrent patterns, but uh, in this case, T1 and T2 are executed at the same time and the output 
produced by T2 are examined by an external agent, for example, a user, that can decide if uh, he wants to modify or cancel or uh, update the execution of uh, step T1 or take uh, some other action. Now, let's investigate which of those patterns are actually supported by the common workflow language. Obviously, it supports the sequential uh, workflow pattern. And it also supports the parallel optimization pattern. In particular, through the scatter gather pattern, which is inside the CWL standard since version 1.0, it is possible to create multiple instances of uh, a sub-workflow for each member of an input list. And it is also possible to uh, create uh, complex figures by combining multiple inputs using dot product or cross product uh, operators. And finally, it is possible to have uh, nested scatters at any level uh, by using nested subworkflows. Regarding the iterative pattern, the bad news is that the official CWS standard up to version 1.2 does not support iterations. Indeed, CWL now can model only directed acyclic graphs. However, there is also a good news because a CWL tool loop extension has already been released to support uh, iterative workflows and uh, at least the reference implementation CWL tool and the uh, Streamflow workflow management system already support such feature. Plus, the same extension with slight uh, modification is currently being evaluated for the inclusion in CWL version 1.3. So, two important things. First, if this uh, feature will be added to CWL, then loops will become first class uh, citizens in the CWL expressive power. And second, since uh, the discussion is still open for uh, modifying the implementation of this uh, feature, the loop feature, please contribute. Uh, if you have ideas, complaints, or anything else, please propose to the community before the approval of CWL uh, version 1.3. Unfortunately, the support for the concurrent optimization pattern is much less mature uh, up to now in the CWL standard. Indeed, uh, the concurrent optimization pattern requires uh, streaming capabilities because step T1 must, uh, st must stream its output uh, tokens to step T2. And it also requires co-scheduling because T1 and T2 must be uh, scheduled and uh, started at the same time. CWL by itself does not support explicit uh, stream types to connect ports, so users have no way to explicitly require a streaming connection between two steps. But fortunately, uh, the CWL structure is uh, regular enough to allow for some automatic conversions of uh, arrays into streams of uh, tokens. For example, if I have a gather followed by a scatter, I can fuse the two patterns together in a streaming connection and something very similar can be also done for loops uh, preserving the outputs of all iterations inside an array followed by a scatter pattern. However, uh, there are two problems here. The first is that uh, these optimizations are totally left to the workflow management system implementation, and so they can vary from one system to another. And second, the, there are some uh, cases in which it is very difficult to infer uh, the actual dependencies and determine if uh, an optimization is safe or not. For example, in case of uh, uh, expression, JavaScript expression fields, like value from, and the consequence of that is that uh, many potential optimization cannot be exploited. For the external steering pattern, 
Note that it can always be modeled as a combination of concurrent and iterative pattern. If we create a step T3 that encloses the external interaction inside its internal business logic. So the output of T3 is emitted and passed to the workflow management system that evaluates a condition and affects the behavior of step T1. Given that, uh, all the limitations discussed before for the concurrent pattern also apply to the external steering one. Finally, we have the coupling uh, pattern in which two or more steps of our flow are executed at the same time and keep exchanging data while progressing. And uh, unfortunately, the CWS support for this uh, pattern is almost none. Uh, indeed, uh, this pattern requires uh, co-scheduling and uh, potentially also co-location of multiple steps. Explicit uh, design of communication channels between input and output ports of different steps to encode uh, this pattern explicitly. And finally, an application agnostic communication protocol to allow multiple steps to communicate to each other. But uh, CWL does not support uh, neither co-scheduling nor co-location and uh, it cannot specify communication channel types between uh, uh, different steps. And uh, finally, it offers a limited support for streaming the file contents between the subsequent steps. But uh, this is just an optimization and not a requirement. Given the discussion so far, it should be clear that CWL offers a partial support for HPC workflows. But in practice, how far are we from being able to model an HPC workflow using CWL? Recently, CWL has been included into two European projects funded by the Euro HPC joint undertaking, the ACROSS project and the UPEX project. In both cases, CWL will be used as the design language to model large-scale HPC workflows in a diverse set of scientific domains – aeronautics, climate, energy and geoscience. In both projects, the CWL workflows will be orchestrated at scale by the Streamflow Workflow Management System, developed and maintained at the University of Torino. Streamflow is able to orchestrate distributed CWL workflows on top of mixed cloud HPC facilities by communicating with uh, HPC queue managers like Slurm, PBS and HyperQ and also with uh, cloud orchestrators like Kubernetes. As I said before in this presentation, Streamflow already supports the CWL tool loop extension to inject uh, iterative patterns inside the CWL standard and also it will uh, optimize uh, workflow execution by rewriting the workflow graph, trying to inject the concurrent optimization pattern whenever it is safe. The ACROSS project contains three different workflows that will be modeled in CWL. The first one is the simulation of an aero engine turbine use case uh, borrowed by Avio Aero. As uh, we can see by looking at the picture, this is a very large uh, iterative simulation workflow in which uh, uh, one of the sub steps can be optimized through a concurrent execution pattern. Indeed, the outputs of the Urans simulation step can be processed by the remaining steps of the workflow before the Uran step terminates. The second workflow uh, in the ACROSS project is a hydrometeorological use case brought by ECMWF. This is a very large scale workflow that contains two different parallel patterns, which can be encoded by the scatter CWL feature, and also a concurrent optimization pattern, which is in reality an external steering pattern, which fuses with the second parallel figure. This is the third and last use case in the ACROSS project, and it is a carbon sequestration workflow brought by Synthet. In this case, we have a quite large ensemble of uh, independent simulation steps, which can be modeled by a CWL scatter directive, followed by an iteration 
to improve the result of the simulation. In the last case, uh, we have a probabilistic seismic engineering workflow provided by INGV in the context of a UPEX European project. This workflow comes with a very large scale parallel pattern, which is an ensemble of uh, uh, a huge number of simulation steps followed by a reduce. Note that in this case, what we want to achieve is to mix uh, parallel and concurrent patterns to perform the reduce on the fly instead of, of waiting all the simulation steps to terminate before starting the sum. So to conclude, even if the CWL support for HPC workflow is still partial, combining the new uh, CWL2 loop feature with the ability of workflow management systems to inject concurrency whenever it is safe to do it, CWL can already be used to model HPC workflows. And this is demonstrated by the four use cases I just presented. However, the goal here is to make CWL a first class citizen in the HPC workflow community. And to do this, some uh, additional work is needed. What uh, we would like to do is to support, uh, finalize the support for iterative patterns and discuss support for concurrent patterns and even for coupling patterns, even if this last case is quite uh, difficult uh, to be achieved with CWL. However, we would like to do this without sacrificing the ease of usage and the ease of implementation of CWL in the name of pure performance optimization. And also, we don't want to privilege HPC over other CWL application fields like genomics or bioinformatics. And finally, we want to design and discuss new features together with uh, the broad CWL community so that uh, anyone can uh, criticize, complain, change, update, or propose new features. And for this, I created a new uh, matrix channel. Uh, the link is uh, at the end of this slide, hoping to foster a broad uh, discussion in the topic of using CWL for HPC. And I will be very happy to discuss with you on that channel in the future. Thank you for attending.